Okay, I think a few people are having trouble getting these assemblies to work. So I'm going to go through first just the connecting rod with bolts and wrist pin and put the piston on top. And then I'll do a separate assembly that connects everything to the crankshaft and actually drives it so that it, it rotates and you can see parts moving around. Okay, so go ahead and we're going to start with file. If you click on new rather than coming to assembly, you click on the word. That's how you get into the menu that you can choose between what units you're working on and it kind of has the, the pre-set up. It'll look to see what units are on the parts that you have open, but just to be sure... It's good to make sure that you're grabbing things and into, especially for the IDWs. So that'll be that'll be helpful. Okay, so I'm going to start by, and this will be just the connecting rod. So what you do is you start up here with place, and then you're going to have to look through all of your files and find each piece that you're connecting together. So it'll give you one piece, and if you just left click, it'll put that. If you keep clicking, it'll keep adding pieces. When you're done, hit escape, and that will, that will get you out of there. And then for each piece that you add, those are gonna start showing up over here on the left-hand side of your screen. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just add each of these pieces. So there's the top, here's the base. You might want to go back through and rename your files. The file name is what's going to show up in your parts list in the IDW and it's just, it'll be easier to, to figure out um, what piece is what. So let's see, I will do the bolts. I only have one file for this, but I need two bolts. So I'm going to go ahead and say click click. So I have, I have two of those guys on there. And let's see, I still need my wrist pin. So there's that piece of it. Escape. And one more piece, I'm going to get the um, this little guy. So here's the piston for the Acura. Okay, so assemble these pieces around and it might help to go to view and turn on the degrees of freedom. So this is gonna show you how each piece can move. So it starts out, it's like they're all in outer space, they're not connected to anything. And I like to take one piece and choose that as kind of grounded, whatever home base that, that you're gonna kind of attach everything to. One other thing to note, so each piece in here has its own coordinate system that is just how it was built to begin with. So if you're drawing this thing and you have it centered around the X and Y axis, this can really help with assembling. And you can, you can assemble parts to parts, or you can actually use the origin and the coordinate system on the part itself to assemble to the other things. Okay, so as well as the part itself having its own origin, then underneath assembly, this third folder here, this is the coordinate system for the assembly. And this is another thing that is kind of nice to use to, to assemble things to. Okay, so I'm going to maybe take the, the assembly coordinate system just to give myself a, a floor and maybe a wall here and might as well use that to, to kind of ground one of these parts. If you look at your view cube, so there's my front and you can decide how you want all of this stuff to be oriented. So it might be nice to have things so that if you look at the front of it, and this is again when you when you bring it into your IDW, it will bring it in with this orientation. So think through that as you're as you're placing things. So I'm going to start out by just getting this kind of the handle of the connecting rod, and I'm going to 
join it so that it's sliding around on this front pit. So assemble, constraints. There's a whole bunch of different constraints. So you can kind of go through these and explore the different types of ways that you can connect things. So if you have a bolt, if you want get this first one on the left, and that's for most of the CAD tools, it kind of goes from left to right to what is used most to what is used least. You can constrain motions. If you want to play around with actually gears and expanding the rest of this engine, with um, you can constrain gears to rotate together. But, um, we'll start out with this, this very simple, and this can go surface to surface, axis to axis, center point to center point, edge to edge, pretty much anything you click on, and then you just constrain it, you stick it to, to something else. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hover over this, and it'll show you that I'm like hovering over maybe the surface or the center of something. So you can either grab an edge or if you want to grab the entire surface and have like a whole surface sliding around on something, make sure you're hovering not at the edge, but somewhere in between those edges. So on the, on the surface between the edges and um, it'll, it'll highlight what you're grabbing. And then you're going to click next on what you want that thing to stick to. And every time you add a constraint, that is going to show up underneath your part. So if you come over here to the left-hand side, and it now says mate, and you can, you can find the other half of that as well. So this is joined now up to the, maybe that will only show if you have two different pieces. But you can, yeah, you can click on it and it'll show what is joined to what. And you can also kind of move it around. Like right now, it doesn't really look like it's connected to anything. But if I, if I change my orientation, this is where you can see that, okay, yeah, this is now sliding around on that surface. I've constrained it so that it has to stay on that surface. And if you look at how the degrees of freedom have changed, these little arrows, you can see I can move up and down, but I can no longer move off of this surface. So I now only have one rotation. If you just kind of compare it to what the other parts are doing, I only have one rotation and I only have a couple different ways to move it. Okay, so now let's say I want to orient this thing so it's it's straight up and down. So what I can do is I'm going to need something else, some kind of an axis that will let me rotate around this thing. So I'm going to go ahead and this time I'm going to grab the center of it and notice how I, I get that center. I'm not actually hovering around the center, I'm hovering on the edge. So as I move my, cor my cursor to the edge of it. It's highlighting that center. And then I'm going to put just the center of this on this, this other plane. Okay, so applying this, now I have something that I can, I can move around. And if you see how it's constrained, I have, I have two constraints. So it's on this plane. And then if I, if I look from the top of it, it's now kind of rotating around this, this center point as well. If you ever get a constraint on there wrong, what you can do is, is come over here, right click on it, and you can either edit that constraint or you can delete it. Or if you want to just temporarily turn the thing off, you can suppress it. And then you can reactivate it. So if you want to kind of adjust it, move things around a little bit more, and then try and apply it again. So it's, yeah, everything that you do is going to be showing up on this, this left-hand side. And you can always come back, change it around, get rid of it, modify it, suppress it. And it'll highlight 
what's happening at each of those parts as you, as you kind of hover over the thing. Okay, so here is, and we still have this is able to move around. So maybe I want this to be perfectly straight up and down. And if I bring this into the IDW, that will make it a lot nicer for the IDW too. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'll constrain the lower part of this as well. That'll get me something that's straight up and down. And maybe just one last constraint just to get this on my, on my coordinate system well. And there's, again, there's no right way to do this, but I do like to kind of just pick one piece to start with to, to ground until it, it can't move at all. So you can see now, now this lower part of my connecting rod cannot move. If you want to really make sure it, it can't move, if you right click on the part, you can come down and say grounded. So that just is your home base, it's not moving. And now you have something to connect to everything else to. Okay, so now that I have my home base, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the visibility of those, those other planes just to declutter it a little bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and attach everything else to this lower connecting rod. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this top piece. And for this one, we're gonna need three different constraints. And as we add them, you'll kinda of see why. So I'm gonna line up where this bolt is gonna be on here. So this one, so you can constrain either the, the center point let me show you, if I do the center point to center point, so this is not a good way to do it. You see the axis is not lined up, so it's just, it's just a point that's stuck on there and it's not aligned or anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and come to the, there's my connecting rod base and the top and this little guy, so that's not such a good way to, to join things together. So I'll go ahead and just, Delete that constraint, get rid of it. So instead of center to center, I'm going to grab the entire axis. So edge gives you the center, and then I'm hovering over the curved surface to get that axis. So axis, axis. And then after each constraint you add, and again, you really have to view this from the right angle to see what's going on. So now you can see that that, that axis is now constrained. So when I'm rotating, just hit the shift key and then pushing down on that scroll button. Okay, so there's one constraint. I'll go ahead and line up the next bolt. So I'm gonna click on one side click, and then my second constraint, so it's just attaching two things to one another. So, and again, I'm going to try and get the entire axis to the entire axis. So now I have, if I look at this thing from the top view, you can see those are, those are nice and aligned with one another. And those, those bolts will now line up right, right on top of one another. The last piece that will constrain will be the surface of one to the surface of the other. And right in the middle of this constraint, you can move things around and rotate it. So again, I'm, I'm holding down my shift key and I'm pushing down on that wheel, the scroll button, so that I can I can move things around. So surface, surface, apply. And I now have no green arrows on either of these parts. They're both solid, in place. They're lined up, so if you look at the front of it, it's straight on to the front. <laughs> Okay, now that I have those bolts lined up, I might as well try and get those in. So let's go ahead and try one of these guys. 
So we're going to grab the entire axis of this bolt and then tell it that yes, we want to come in here, apply. And that was kind of a nice thing that I didn't have to do the axis and the surface. It saw that it was a bolt and it, it did both of those constraints at once. And you can, you can come in here again. So if I click on, this is the bolt one, it kind of highlights it as you click it over here. And then here's the insert constraint to get that bolt into place. Okay, so here we go for the for the second bolt. And let me show you one more thing for that. So when I'm when I'm grabbing this thing, I can either highlight the bottom of this or the top of this. So depending on how you hover over it, that's going to pick up the, both the axis of the bolt and then which, which edge I want lined up. So I'm going to try and grab that inner edge, and then that is going to line up with the top of this. OK, there's the bolts are in place. And now we can go ahead and get this piston in place. So I'll go ahead and very similarly, I'm going to try the axis of this thing to the axis, apply. And let me move this around a little bit more so that it's more into place. So I'll go ahead and so that that axis is now lined up, but let's go ahead and, and constrain the the ax the center points maybe to the to the center point or surface to surface. And if we got all of our dimensions right, then we have everything everything lined up well. Okay, if I want that to be nice and lined up, maybe I look at, and this is where the the origin of the assembly comes into play. So I have this XY plane here. And if I want that top to be oriented just perfectly, I'm going to go ahead and take this axis and line it up with that axis. So now everything is, is straight up and down where it needs to be. and. Last piece of this thing, let's go ahead and, and grab this wrist pin. Maybe we can try out that um, the insert again. Even though this isn't a bolt, it has an axis and a surface. And we want this to be on an axis and a surface. So I'm pulling it out to the surface. And we can reverse the direction of that insertion if we want. So once this is all lined up, this will be nice to bring into our IDW. So it'll bring it in as an assembly. Let me just, um, I guess I better save it. So we'll say piston example. And I'll go ahead and open up a um, IDW and we can pull this thing in. So here we are over in an IDW. I have a, a new sheet added with a title block. And I'm going to go ahead and pull in the entire assembly. So as you're pulling this thing in, you can change what the scale is. You can change the orientation. And when you have a whole assembly like this, so you can, here's a protected view. And all of these things after you create it, to drag it around rather than clicking on the inside of it, grab the edge of that box will allow you to, to drag things. Under annotate, 
This is where you can add your parts list. And it's going to grab the parts list from the assembly that you have in there. If you right click on the parts list, you get this edit parts list option. And this is where you can decide what information you actually want in this thing. So I'm going to just get rid of that description. You can have all kinds of stuff, who authored each piece and set date and all kinds of stuff in there. We'll just keep it, it simple, though, get rid of that um, description. The part number is pulling that information from what you named your file. So you've got the quantity, so like your, your bolt, we have two bolts. The balloons, these will correspond to the item number on your, your parts list. So I'm going to click on balloon and then click on the part that I want to label. I'm left clicking, left clicking, left clicking. When you have it where you want it, Go ahead and right click and continue. And you can keep keep adding those balloons. So see if I can line this up. If you sort of hover over one of them and then pull it up, it will align those numbers for you. So there's the, the second piece, third piece. So yeah, play around with your assembly and I'm going to make two different assemblies, one that is specific for kind of this, this IDW where everything is lined up and perfect, and another assembly with driven constraints. You can see things moving around, but for your, for your IDW, get something that everything is lined up straight up and down, tacked into place, nothing is moving so that you can put together a nice first page for your set of, of working diagrams here. Some of these parts might be a little bit tricky, like the wrist pin. I have to grab it kind of in between that little guy. So decide how you want those guys. Okay, so hopefully that was a little bit better for, for walking through an assembly and then getting that assembly into your IDW.